Thank you very much, Mallory and Sarah, for organizing this conference. Actually, I was looking to be back at Pitt uh, last year, but then we had the pandemic. So <laughs> I am uh, presenting from my office with snow outside in Boston. So the title of the paper has slightly changed. Instead of unfair, we decided to use unequal distribution of teachers in schools. It's a joint work, uh, exciting joint work with Julian Combe, uh, uh, Umut Dur, Olivier Ter uh, Tarsio, Camille Terrier, and uh, myself. So, uh, our uh, indeed our uh, topic is unequal distribution of experienced teachers, especially. So we know that teacher quality matters for students' achievement. There's lots of uh, evidence in this direction. Uh, experience is one of the most uh, important determinants of teacher value added. Yet uh, disadvantaged students often have less access to experienced teachers uh, as evidenced by all these studies. Uh, and this leads to a source of widespread uh, dysfunction uh, from the student side. Uh, there's large achievement uh, inequalities as measured by OECD PISA tests. And uh, from the teacher side, the lack of attractiveness of the teaching profession uh, documented through several surveys. So our case study in a way, because we will use also empirical data comes from uh, France. And the way you should look at the French map uh, is that uh, the darker regions uh, uh, on the left are uh, the students, uh, uh, are the places with students who are coming the uh, worst uh, 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 socioeconomic backgrounds, which is called priority education uh, in, uh, in France. And uh, the same regions, if you look at the map on the right, also now we have the lighter colors, the ratio of the teachers, uh, experienced teachers to uh, lower experienced teachers uh, is the lowest. So there is a, a, a a quite uh, uh, striking match between uh, the priority education status and low experience of teachers. So uh, what do the uh, countries do uh, to mitigate this kind of unequal distribution? Of course, we are not the first one to realize that. Uh, and we can, in a way, uh, to think about countries in two broad categories. There is uh, the decentralized assignment countries, if you wish you can call and the centralized assignment countries. So these centralized assignment countries are, uh, every school district does their own hiring uh, through their own system. And uh, they usually have flexible salaries within the system. Uh, and United States, UK and Sweden are some examples. And they use sometimes uh, wages uh, in a way uh, to incentivize better quality teaching. And there have been certain recent studies uh, in this direction. But there is also a large uh, group of countries where the teacher assignment uh, done, uh, is done centrally. These uh, countries uh, are uh, usually uh, the countries where uh, the uh, teachers at public schools are government employees, like civil servants. And uh, Mexico, Turkey, Uruguay, Italy, Portugal are some of the examples we can give uh, out of that, uh, out of this. And uh, my quarters, uh, uh, Julian, uh, uh, Olivier, and Camille have uh, this very nice paper where they read, uh, documented and proposed certain assignment mechanisms from France regarding this centralized assignment. So besides this centralized assignment feature of these uh, 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 countries, there is another important difference from the uh, most decentralized assignment countries. Here, uh, usually it's almost impossible to use wages as an incentivized mechanism due to several uh, layers of bureaucracy and uh, uh, unions, uh, etc. And, uh, and they usually follow rigid civil servant salary schemes. For example, France or Turkey, I can give you some uh, ideas. They give sometimes very small bonuses, but they are not the main uh, incentivized uh, incentive drivers. 
So my paper, uh, the, my presentation will focus on centralized assignment. So uh, how does the centralized assignment process work? Uh, it's, uh, uh, the way it works is that teachers submit a rank uh, list of schools or districts. So who's, uh, who, who are these teachers? These are tenure teachers who would like reassignment either within the same district or region, let me call it for, for example, in France, uh, to stay in the region or go to a different school or change the, the regions. Uh, and uh, new teachers who just got, uh, they're uh, waiting for first assignment uh, and they are all done together. Uh, 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 so, uh, and the schools and school districts uh, or regions have priorities over teachers determined by certain formula based on teachers' characteristics. Then the administration uses an assignment mechanism to, uh, to determine the teacher's assignment to schools. So our question is, is it possible to design matching mechanisms for teacher assignment to help remedy some of the teacher uh, quality uh, related inequality uh, problems uh, in access to education? So the way you may wanna think about it is that we want to improve through the assignment and reassignment the quality of teachers uh, 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 for schools, not uh, just for teachers, because teachers are uh, going to be moving if they want to move uh, in many cases. And also uh, in doing that, can we solve some of the perceived career path evolution problems of teachers? For example, can we still sustain mobility of tenure teachers and improve the initial assignment of new teachers if we smartly design a system? because there is a well-known dissatisfaction, especially among the new teachers when they're assigned. Usually the way it works is that they go to these disadvantaged regions that nobody wants to, uh, or few people really want to stay initially, and they, uh, they, they don't have a very good uh, impression about their uh, career opportunities, etc. But of course, we want to also allow the mobility of tenure teachers who are already assigned to positions in a way uh, as long as uh, it's possible to do it. So I would like to summarize our contribution. I have uh, a few time, uh, not too much time. So I will go to theoretical details of uh, one of the mechanisms. And if I have time for the second one, but uh, basically first we introduce a two-sided matching framework to explicitly model school preferences as a proxy of teachers value added uh, to education. Secondly, we introduce uh, from the uh, uh, mechanism design perspective two strategy proof mechanisms to improve the welfare of schools and teachers with respect to the initial outcome, which is we, call, we will call status quo while accommodating for new teachers uh, coming into the system based on certain efficiency and stability concerns respectively. And outside of this teacher assignment problem, we envision this if efficient mechanisms can be used in uh, uh, many other settings where some kind of statistical improvement is required, not only for teachers, or for uh, uh, applicants, but also for the jobs, for the positions, such as rotation of uh, jobs in big uh, companies, assignment of tasks, et cetera. And especially this fairness stability-based mechanism can be used in other settings with more heterogeneous applicant preferences, such as school choice with a statistical matching. So many places assign students initially based on addresses, then some exchange is uh, allowed, for example, in Austin, Texas. So we have uh, this kind of applications. And our third, uh, third contribution is that using the French data from 2013, we conduct a, a rigorous empirical and a, a counterfactual analysis to show that under our methods, the poorest regions in France would benefit by having more experienced teachers with respect to the current French allocation mechanism. Efficient mechanism also invokes mobility helping tenure teacher welfare. While slightly better teacher distribution is achieved, this stability or fairness concerns where we also want to improve the school welfare with respect to the status quo have a large cost in terms of 
uh, mobility. They prevent mobility of uh, uh, tenured teachers uh, to a high degree. So let me immediately go to the theoretical analysis. So we have uh, a set of teachers, T, a set of new teachers, a set of new uh, tenured teachers. So what distinguishes our paper is that we assign a type if you wish uh, this could be experienced, it could be very abstract. For each teacher, which is uh, publicly observable, theta t is the type of this uh, 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 teacher. And the schools will have preferences over these types of teachers. So we have set of schools and there's an initial matching. Initial matching uh, tells that if you are a tenured teacher, what is your initial match at, uh, at which, uh, which school you are matched? And if you are uh, uh, not, an, uh, 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 not a tenured teacher, a new teacher, then your initial match is empty. Also, we have a number of vacant positions usually vacated from the previous years by turnovers, et cetera, or new openings. And um, uh, in the sense that uh, the schools have uh, uh, usually have uh, quotas larger than the initial, uh, the size of their initial set of uh, employees and the teachers we assume have strict preference relation over schools or remaining unmatched not to be assigned anywhere so the school preferences this is one of our contributions so i'm not going to say whether these are preferences or priorities you can interpret in in any way uh, Okay, uh, but the way to think about is that we have a weak preference relation uh, of uh, schools uh, and we will assume this an incomplete relation. And this is induced by a ranking uh, over these types, okay, of uh, teachers. So uh, what is this type ranking? So this is a linear order. So theta triangle theta prime means that theta is a better type than theta prime type. Okay, and acceptable types are always, uh, there exist uh, acceptable types and unacceptable types to school down to want to employ. Okay, uh, so the assumption we make in the preferences is that we assume that uh, this preference relation obeys to some kind of first order stochastic uh, dominance kind of uh, 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 relation over distributions, okay, of the types. So take two sets, T bar and uh, uh, T hat, okay, uh, if, the, if it is the case that take any type, okay, the number of teachers at least as good as this type theta in uh, uh, T bar is for every theta greater than or equal to the, that number for theta hat, we will say that theta bar is weakly preferred to theta prime, okay, if there is one uh, strict equality, we will call it uh, theta bar is better than uh, theta hat, okay? So, and we don't want any unacceptable teachers to be assigned uh, and uh, uh, to schools uh, in the sense that if uh, the school uh, would uh, prefer their initial matching to uh, this set with an unacceptable uh, teacher. So these are the two main assumptions we make. So this FOSD relationship induces an incomplete preference ranking over the groups uh, uh, of uh, uh, students. So we are mute about how unambiguous uh, uh, ambiguous comparisons are done between uh, if the FOSD relation doesn't hold between two sets of teachers. So we consider two very important uh, properties. So a mechanism is just a, a, a mapping as usual, which matches the preferences of the teachers. So as, let's assume everything else is fixed to, uh, uh, to a matching. So because the preferences we don't know uh, about as central uh, designers. And we would like to uh, uh, hope these mechanisms to satisfy what we, uh, uh, th this is the key uh, uh, axiom in our paper to be status quo improving. So what does it, so I'm gonna call it SI for short. So what does that mean? For every school S, basically, whatever is assigned under the reported preferences to this school is at least as good as the initial status quo match for the school. Okay, so the school improves. School doesn't lose very valuable teachers. So this will be quite important. We want to improve. So we don't want the schools uh, to lose, for example, 
very experienced teachers if they cannot replace them okay uh things like that so for every teacher uh, uh also we need this assumption and this will say that the school the uh, teachers is assigned is at least as good as uh, her uh, initial match okay so strategy proofness is at the standard incentive property so it is weakly better to tell to report the true uh, preference ranking over schools than uh, tell something else for every teacher under this mechanism okay now we will focus on two different this uh, is this, uh, this derata in the sense that we will look at an efficiency focused solution and then fairness focused solution if you ask why fairness uh, focused solution because the french system currently uses a fairness focused solution so we uh, we explore both sides okay so the efficient uh, uh, efficiency is just parity efficiency we use but we use a refinement of parity efficiency in our case so it is not only parity efficient but it will be uh, what we call uh, uh, teacher optimal among the parity efficient ones and uh, uh, SI uh, matches. Okay, and our solution concept will rely or look like it will be relying on uh, the famous uh, top trading cycles mechanism, which is uh, extensively used to uh, to talk about efficient and strategy proof allocation in the uh, in the context of uh, allocation of indivisible objects and we will uh, think like that but uh, so just to reminder and the people who don't know about it let me just quickly tell what does it look like so it works from uh, you create a, a this algorithm it works through a graph of uh, objects uh, and what are these uh, graph nodes teachers and schools and each teacher in a way there's a directed link uh, 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 etc so it's a directed graph and the directed graph is found in every step of the algorithm as follows the remaining teachers in the problem uh, points to uh, their top choice and uh, each school uh, uh, points to uh, its remaining highest priority employees so there's an internal priority ordering of these teachers if uh, already uh, there exists such an employee because maybe the employees are already matched uh, in the previous rounds of the school to either to the school or other places in that case this school doesn't point to anywhere okay so in this case if there is a cycle uh, basically it will be a cycle of teacher uh, teachers um, pointing to uh, um, uh, a school school pointing to a teacher so on so forth and it comes back to the beginning then we clear the cycle by assigning each teacher to the uh, school that uh, she's pointing to okay and we go to the next step but there may not be a cycle then uh, then we have these chains which are pointing toward there are these chains ending with schools who have no uh, uh, no longer uh, a highest priority employee left okay because they're all gone but they have vacant positions so they can get some influx of new people in okay and uh, then we choose basically a, a, a chain uh, beginning for the highest prior teacher so the uh, the version i explained it to you is uh, uh, very similar to this road summers unvar top trading cycles and chains uh, mechanism but the others are all related in uh, 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 different ways but here's a problem with this mechanism. This mechanism makes teachers better off because teachers uh, 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 have always the option to point back to their own school and stay there. So they don't need to go to a place that they don't like. However, the schools may be sending out very good teachers and they may get worse off as we are doing this. Okay, and they may not receive very good. So the teacher, uh, the schools don't have a control over that. So uh none of the existent variants of ttc in this sense are uh status quo improving and i would like to say one more thing uh this uh, uh this vacant positions and new teachers actually change the problem fundamentally uh, uh if uh, i won't probably have time to talk about the related literature some uh, uh conditions found 
which would uh, make sure this statistical improvement is possible uh, when there are no te new teachers and vacant positions do not work, uh, are not sufficient in this domain. So this problem, this uh, it creates this richness uh, uh, from a theoretical point of view. So uh, let me tell our key innovation in this mechanism. So we are not going to let every teacher to point to their top choice in the uh, algorithm. So we will design pointing rules, who, which school can point to uh, which uh, teachers and which, more importantly, which teachers can point to which schools in this uh, construction of the algorithm without sacrificing incentive properties and, uh, and efficiency properties. Uh, okay, so it turns uh, out that uh, we need the schools uh, use an inverse pointing order according to their type ranking. So they first point to their worst teacher type and that they try to match that person. Okay. And the teacher pointing rule is that uh, basically a teacher can only point, uh, will point to her uh, top choice school uh, if her coming in is going to not make the school worse than uh, 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 the current set of, uh, uh, I mean, is not going to uh, make her worse according to the initial matching. So there is a way we can determine it. It's uh, the devil is in the detail, but I'm not going to talk about that. And uh, this uh, FOST preferences uh, allows for this uh, incentive properties, etc., go through, and then. How do we handle uh, vacant positions? Because th there could be these chains, like I told you. So we don't want migration, uncontrolled migration from, uh, uh, let's say, a, a poorest region to a, a good region just because of the vacant uh, ones. So we only allow chains to be uh, initiated by new teachers, not from a tenured teacher coming from another school. So these, uh, all of these guarantee that our mechanism is going to be uh, this, uh, will have this efficiency property and also it's going to be strategy proof. So uh, how am I doing in time? Uh, how many minutes do I have? You have uh, seven, seven minutes. Seven minutes, okay. So the way I wanna say is that uh, stable matching, uh, our innovation here is also important. Uh, the way I want to maybe uh, let me skip this one for now. I will come back to it. But I want to talk about uh, since this uh, conference has a, uh, a big emphasis on uh, 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 the real impact in real life. So uh, I would like to show on uh, uh, some of the results we obtained using uh, 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 empirical uh, methods, okay? So just to give you an idea, okay? Uh, uh, so there are 473,000 teachers in secondary uh, uh, schools in France, and there's a centralized system, and it has uh, two phases. There is a, a inter-regional phase and intra-regional phase. Uh, they are done back to back. So what we are going to do is, uh, 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 so basically uh, one thing I want to say is that each phase is compulsory for new teachers and uh, optional for tenured teachers wishing to change region or school, okay? And these are the numbers from 2013, how many people participate to each one, okay? So the first one is more coarse. You just determine which region you want to go and you go through the match. Uh, and you get some initial endowment after that. And in the inter-regional uh, uh, phase, now your region is set, you wanna change a school based on whatever endowment you're assigned uh, in this uh, first uh, range, uh, go to a different school uh, or uh, 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 within the region, okay? So we do, uh, this is done uh, twice, uh, back to back, okay? So, uh, uh, participants are, like I said, new teachers, tenured teachers, and there are vacated positions and uh, the positions of the teachers who obtain a transfer. These are the uh, things we are looking at, okay? So the current mechanism uses 
uh, a deferred acceptance algorithm type of, so this is the fairness part, uh, which comes into play using uh, uh, some statistical improvements for teachers, but not for the schools. So schools uh, can get worse off and they do during this deferred acceptance run, okay? So uh, let me skip uh, the, these details about priority rules. Maybe I can say one more thing, okay? Here, uh, uh, there is a, a point system defined by the Ministry of Education within France to determine your priority ranking, uh, uh, basically. And uh, this takes into ex uh, uh, account experience, spousal reunification, disability, or having a position in a disadvantaged area school. Those are all uh, parts of this uh, priority rule. So our study is, uh, as well as defining the algorithmic aspects of allocation, also what would be a more sensible priority system. Uh, proposed, okay? Uh, as you can imagine, this could have a dramatic uh, uh, backlash or uh, acceptance, depending on who you ask, within uh, the country. But that's our major, so we want to push our boundary. How can we modify these priorities? So our first order stochastic dominance preferences that I introduced are literally about these priority uh, rules or modifications in priority rules. And to give you, a, a, so I will talk about the three uh, best regions and three worst regions, okay? Uh, Rand, Bordeaux, and Toulouse are the three best. They have the highest uh, uh, amount of experienced teachers and uh, they have the least uh, uh, disadvantaged students, okay? On the other hand, the, uh, uh, the very large regions of uh, uh, um, Amiens, uh, uh, Crete, and Versailles, for these uh, three regions, we have just the opposite. We have very few ten, uh, long experienced teachers and we have a high uh, disadvantage uh, number, okay? So, uh, so the, uh, the, the, the two perceived issues in the allocation system are that new teachers are disadvantaged uh, uh, as schools region priorities determined by regulations heavily depend on teacher seniority. And uh, uh, the number of teachers who would like to transfer out of lower socioeconomic uh, uh, regions are far more than who would like to be assigned and thus uh, new or less experienced teachers usually end up at these regions. And this is very common, not just in France. I'm originally from Turkey and uh, I know that uh, a similar problem exists in Turkey. Okay, so, uh, so let me give you the specifications of the counterfactual analysis. So we first uh, used a structural choice model to estimate the teacher preferences using 2013 French data. We use a method uh, outlined in uh, 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 Fagrant and He in 2000, uh, so the date is wrong, that 2019, I believe. Uh, so I'm gonna skip that. Okay, let's say we do that, but uh, I will focus the counterfactual analysis. So we, I'm going to look at four mechanisms as well as the initial matching, okay? So this SICC is the mechanism I just described it to you. We have a counterpart which takes into consideration uh, and uh, uh, for the deferred acceptance, uh, uh, so we call it SIDA for this reason. Okay, uh, it's theoretically quite interesting, but I'm going to skip that for today. Uh, the details of it, just think about it. It's going to statistical improve everybody and uh, obtain a milder version of fairness condition than regular deferred acceptance uh, or Gail Shapley satisfies because we have an impossibility. You cannot have a stable matching and a statistical improvement in matching. So we, we have to come up uh, and innovative design, okay? And we have this uh, vanilla mechanisms, I will call them TTC star. So there is no, this is the uh, Abdul Qadir Ola and Sönmez uh, version of uh, TTC mechanism, if you wish. It's not that, but it's very similar to that, okay? 
so there is no improvement necessarily for schools uh, according to status quo in this one. And there's DA star. So this is again, vanilla deferred acceptance with the exception that teachers, uh, uh, if you are a teacher from a school, you're, you are uh, ranked in their priority list at the top. So it is status quo improving for teachers, but not for schools. So the schools can get worse, okay? But in, uh, in using these two mechanisms, I'm not going to use the uh, education ministry priorities, okay? I'm going to use the, uh, the preferences that I just talked about, FOST preferences. And what are they, okay? So we are going to assume the teacher type corresponds to her experience, and we will classify teachers basically into 12 experience bins from low experience to, uh, uh, to high experience. And uh, the way we will think about regions uh, rankings over teachers types is if you wish conversion to the median. So everybody, uh, so if you wish, these are like actually not exactly the school's preferences, but the preferences by the uh, ministry or the uh, uh, welfare designer uh, or the social uh, uh, designer in the sense that we want to get a balanced distribution of uh, uh, teachers across school. So if, if there's a region uh, uh, below the median experience level of the country in terms of their distribution, and these are our, these three, uh, uh, I will call them youngest regions, then the FOSD preferences of the schools will say that high experience is better than medium experience, which is so on and so forth, which is better than low experience. On the other hand, if the regions are above the median experience level, like Bordeaux, Rennes, or beyond, then we will have the reverse order, low experience uh, to high experience. Okay, and there's also these middle regions, okay? And there's lots of movement occurs there, but I'm going to not too much focus on what goes on with them. Maybe in one picture, I will show you how they go, come to- right, good. Just giving you a one minute warning. Okay, very good. So let me tell our findings, okay? Despite a slightly better distributional performance, SIDA has a large mobility cost to tenure teachers compared to SICC. Only seven tenure teachers move from their initial positions under uh, SIDA because the preferences of the teachers, even though we estimate them, etc., have lots, uh, a lot of homogeneity across them. Okay, and, and, and this number is 1,598 under SICC. So, okay, we get a bit better distribution do, uh, through SIDA, but it comes to a much higher cost to mobility. All right, so if you wanna look at this picture, this is the Lorentz curve, if you wish, for the poorest regions, the youngest regions, okay? So the curve being highest is a good thing. Okay, so you want it to be high. That means you are getting high experienced teachers early on. All right. If you look, uh, look at this picture, DI, uh, DA star and TTC star do poorly initially. Uh, they are lower than the other curves. TTC star stays there, but DA star for the medium experience or lower experienced teachers jump above the other curves. Okay. But the other ones, if you look at SICC is consistently very good and SIDA is consistently very good. But like I said, SIDA comes at the cost of uh, mobility. So it, uh, it prevents, so that would be, uh, that could be bad for uh, ex experienced teacher to move out of, uh, for example, at some point they wanna maybe move out of the poor regions, right? So it may not uh, do that, okay? And uh, uh, basically, let me talk about that. Uh, maybe I'm going to borrow uh, one or two minutes uh, just to give you this important insights. So SICC produces a distribution of teachers' experience which first order stochastically dominates the distribution under TTC star. And teachers with one or two years of experience, these are low experience teachers, SICC assigns to these regions only 1,300, while TTC stars uh, assigns more. And SIDA produces a distribution of teachers' experience which does not first order stochastically uh, dominate DA star. SIDA is better, actually better than all of them, uh, uh, than DA star to assign high experience teachers, 
However, DA star is better than SIDA and all of them to assign uh, lower to mid uh, experienced teachers. So this is uh, how uh, these things work out. Okay, for the all the regions, uh, basically, uh, now the uh, picture is reversed. So maybe I don't want to talk about too much about the oldest regions because they are uh, the best regions, uh, highest experience, etc. So uh, what I want to show you is maybe finally this picture, then I will finish. So uh, the way to look at this picture is it's a bit confusing maybe at first glance. Just look at the... Uh, 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 higher uh, left uh, graph here. So the way you want to see uh, uh, is that the x-axis is the average experience of the region, okay, uh, uh, at the initial matching. And uh, the vertical axis is that, according to the comparison group, uh, our uh, mechanism, uh, how much the mechanism we are considering, uh, changes the uh, uh, changes the uh, distribution okay so uh, the one on the left uh, right and top shows you that uh, uh, I'm sorry the left uh, and uh, on the top shows that according to the initial uh, thing SICC does quite well so you see how big those regions are those cycles shows that the poorest regions so you want an allocation to be uh, close to the negative 45 degree line if things are going well, okay? So we have that kind of thing going on. So the experience goes up in the poorest regions, the experience uh, goes down in the wealthiest regions. So that's what it says, uh, uh, okay? Uh, and uh, that's what I would like to show you last. And I would like to stop here.